What is going on everybody and welcome to this Unity tutorial video where I'm going to be showing you how we can create what I call screen boxes in your Unity game. Uh, so this is specific for 2D Unity games and the idea behind this tutorial came from another independent developer who's also a YouTuber and uh, his name is Thomas Brush. You may have heard of him. He did a uh, tutorial on kind of the uh, mechanics of how his game works and everything like that. And one of the really cool things that he had in his game were these things that he called screen boxes. And what screen boxes are is basically they kind of encapsulate everything um, within one little area of your game. And normally you're gonna have a bunch of these different screen boxes within one scene. And um, the, each screen box kind of has this like gizmo border around it. And that border represents of uh, what the camera can see. So um, as far as the camera goes left, right, up, down, everything is going to be within uh, that little border that we're going to create. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can actually kind of create those screen edges. So it's really easy for us uh, to see the edges of what our camera can see. So it makes sure that we have everything in focus that we need to and uh, we're not like clipping out any edges and we can also see if there's anything overlapping from another screen box in there. But if you don't wanna go through the trouble of creating it yourself, I've put a link in the description that has kind of these project files um, so you can just kind of drop it into your game. You will have to do a little bit of configuration, but I'll give you some instructions on how to do that in that uh, little package. So if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for more um, Unity tool tutorials like this one. And of course, if you have any problems with this, feel free to drop me a question down in the comments section below. And with that, let's jump right on into the tutorial video. All right, so here we are over in Unity, and I'm just gonna give you a quick little overview of my project, show you kind of how I have it set up and everything like that. Um, and then I'm gonna be showing you kind of what we're trying to accomplish with these whole screen boxes. So you'll see up here, up in the scene view, we kind of have these like three main kind of sections. Um, and then so these are the basically like the three kind of gameplay areas. The idea of this little game is that you are uh, kind of this little UFO thing, and you can just kind of fly around with the arrow keys. When you hit one of these warp points, you'll kind of warp over to the next section and you can hit this one and go back to the first one. And then these two are kind of linked together. So you can kind of travel from one to the next to the next and then go back if you want to. And then you'll see these white boxes. These are basically just kind of colliders um, and they just kind of set the bounds of the area that the player can actually travel to. So now if we go up to here where it says gizmos, we can just click this to toggle gizmos on or off. Um, so we can toggle them on and then I can kind of show you what we're doing here with these screen boxes. So uh, a couple things you'll notice, of course, with the uh, little warp points, we have these kind of blue lines and this actually shows you the exact point you're warping to. So when you hit this one, you actually warp to the very end of this line here. Uh, same thing back here. And then of course these two are linked together as well. Uh, but you may also notice this kind of red line that goes around the edge here. And so this is really what we're trying to accomplish with these screen boxes. Basically this red line is going to be representative of the very edge of what the camera can see. So you'll see if we start our game, uh, you're gonna notice a couple of things. First, that this actually turns to green. And this is green because it's like the active kind of box. You'll see that the box that's around this one is still red. And then this box, we have actually this inside the little boundaries and this is still red as well. So anyways, back to the very first one, you'll see that um, when we kind of move, when we kind of move around, the camera is sticking exactly with the player. So uh, you'll see up in the scene view that the camera is right on top of the player. Now, however, when we get close to one of the sides here, all right, and then we kind of hit this boundary. You'll see that the player keeps going, but the camera the camera stays in place. And that's because we've set kind of some boundaries for the camera of how far left or right it can go, how far up and down we can go. So same thing if we go over to this side, you'll see that after, after a point, it kind of unlocks in the horizontal direction. Of course, we can also go down to the bottom and then so you know it's kind of, completely unlocked down here. But so you'll see that you're not able to see anything past this exact line. And this is just what we want. We want a nice good representation of what the borders of our camera are going to be. And so this is all completely dynamic. So instead of having us with this four by three aspect ratio, maybe we wanna make our game a 16 by nine aspect ratio because that's a lot more common these days. 
So now that we have this 16 by nine aspect ratio, you'll see that the, the border for our screen box has changed a little bit. And we notice a couple issues right off the bat. Um, of course, you'll see that this kind of screen box goes over the edge here. Um, so there's kind of this little, this little gap. And you'll see if we actually go into play mode, now when we go over, all right, it's gonna keep going and we can kind of see off the screen here. And that just totally breaks the immersion of the game. Uh, so that's definitely one issue we want to fix. Now the other issue happens when we kind of come up to this next little area. Um, we see that we can actually, this this box kind of overlaps with the, uh, the next screen. So we see kind of like the edge of this little screen in here. Again, that's just something that kind of breaks the, breaks the immersion there. Um, and then of course, yeah, when we, when we travel to the next point, you'll see that this outline kind of now turns red and this one is now green. Okay, but yeah, we'll exit out of play mode and now we can kind of resolve some of these issues. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, so one, of course, we can just kind of select the screen box and we can just kind of move this wherever we want. So we can kind of move this out of the way. Um, but if we wanted to keep it right there for whatever reason, another thing we could do is just adjust the boundaries. So here, because this, uh, this boundary, this is kind of the maximum X position. If we go over to max cam position and X, we can decrease this value from 10. We'll slide it back, slide it back. And then until about right there, we'll put in a value of eight. And now you see when we zoom in, that this line is clearly on uh, the other side of this little boundary here. So when we actually go into play mode and we bring our little character up to that corner, we're never going to be able to see uh, that kind of that planet over there. And then now again with the other side, if we want, there's of course a couple ways we can do this. We can just kind of adjust the background so it encompasses the whole thing. Or of course, we can go back here and then now we'll change the minimum X position uh, so, we can, so we can set that to exactly where we want it right there. So now I'm gonna actually show you how I program this. Of course, if you don't really care all that much and you just think this is a nice little feature to have, again, I have a link to this down in the description so you can just go ahead and download it. There's a couple things that you need to do to make it work with your game, but I kind of have like a little checklist of things that you need to do for that. So anyways, in this scene, I have a total of five scripts. So I have uh, kind of the camera controller, the player controller, the scene controller, and the warp controller. These are all basically just kind of for demonstration purposes and I'm just gonna kind of glaze over them. Um, but I do have them all commented so you can kind of understand what's going on here. Um, but the screen box script is the main script that we're going to be focusing on today. And so essentially I have this screen box which is set as kind of the container of everything. Uh, so the screen box contains the background, all these boundaries, um, it has the warp points and everything like that, um, but it does not have the player or the camera. These are just literally things that are in the game, like physical game objects. And then so on each of these screen box game objects, I of course have this screen box script. Again, this is where we're setting our minimum and maximum camera position and we can check to see if it is the current screen box. If it is, it's just a little check mark and you'll see that it turns green just like that. So now I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through all the scripts, the demo scene controller. Um, basically the main thing that it does is it sets which screen boxes are active and inactive. The demo player controller, it just um, looks at the horizontal and vertical axes and translates the player position based on those. The warp controller script, of course, is, is attached to uh, each of these warp points here. All this does is when the player collides with it, it will move the player to the uh, final destination. And then lastly, we have the camera controller. And then within the camera controller, we can kind of set the minimum and maximum bounds so it knows how far left, right, up, and down it can go. And then uh, here's where we set the target position and we basically are just kind of following the player around, but we'll check to see if the camera is out of bounds and then we'll clamp it to the edge of that uh, boundary. Now I know I went kind of quickly through all that, so if you do have any questions on that, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below. But here is the screen box script, and this is kind of the main thing. Uh, the only thing that we're gonna be using here is Unity Engine. 
Um, of course, we're going to be inheriting from mono behavior in this case. So uh, like I mentioned, we'll have the minimum and maximum camera positions. These are minimum and maximum X, Y positions uh, relative to the position of your actual screen box game object. And so next we have the uh, public bool variable for checking if it is the current screen box. And then lastly, we'll have a reference to the main camera here. And we only need one private variable here. Um, it's actually going to be an array of size four. And this is what we're going to use to hold the positions of the four corners of uh, each of our screen boxes. So now in order to draw these lines, we're going to be using the void on draw gizmos function. And this is a built-in unity function. And you know, we can do all kinds of cool um, debugging lines and everything like that. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to calculate half the camera's height and half the camera's width. And the reason we do that, and so I'm just gonna give you a little visual representation of this, but we'll say that we kind of have a box here, and this is going to represent the boundaries of where the camera can travel. So uh, for example, the camera will have it start here and then um, the camera can move all the way up to the edge here. So the camera moves until here, um, but that doesn't mean the player, the player can still move like anywhere over here and stuff like that. This is just kind of uh, the boundaries, the left, right, up, down boundaries of the camera itself. So you figure the left side is kind of the minimum X boundary, the right side is the maximum X boundary, the bottom is the minimum Y boundary and the top is the maximum Y boundary. So even though the camera can only go to over here, the actual screen of what the player sees is gonna be kind of more like this, all right? Because when we set our maximum camera position, we're only setting uh, the position for the camera itself. So now I'm gonna use this red line and then basically this is going to be the far left edge of the screen of what we can see, okay? Uh, again, now if we had our camera right here, and then we kind of look at the screen around it, this is gonna be the right edge of what the camera can see. When the camera is up top, this is going to be the top edge. And finally, this is going to be the bottom edge here. So you'll see that this box right here is really what we're trying to draw right, this red line here. And you'll see when we want to calculate the actual values of where these lines are positioned in the game space, we're going to take the minimum and maximum camera positions in each direction, and then we're only going to need to add half of the camera's width in the X directions and half of the camera's heights in the Y direction. You'll see because when we're at the very boundary, we only have half of the screen remaining to go. So back over into our code here, we're going to calculate the half height and half width. So to calculate the half of the camera height, it's super easy. All we do is just take the uh, orthographic size of the main camera and then half of the camera's width is also very easy. We take the half cam height, which is just what we calculated right here and we'll multiply that by the aspect, the current aspect ratio. So that's main cam dot aspect. And then so because we're doing that, that allows us to dynamically change uh, the size of the camera. If we want a bigger camera, you'll see that my screen boxes are increasing. A smaller camera, you'll see that the screen boxes are decreasing. And then also, of course, as I showed off before, we can choose kind of whichever screen aspect ratio we want, and it's going to be giving us different results in real time. So the next thing that we do is we're actually gonna find the dimensions of this screen box here. So first we're going to find the minimum dimensions. And so the minimum dimensions are going to be this side here and this bottom side here. So we'll take the minimum camera position dot X, which is what we set kind of publicly up here, which is how far to the left we allow our camera to go. And then we subtract half the camera width, and then we add in the transform.position.x of the screen box. Uh, so that makes it relative to the screen box. So if we ever want to go here and move the screen box around, you'll see that uh, this this nice little gizmo stays with it. So we don't need to like go ahead and change the camera boundaries each time we wanna move the screen box around. And I'm not gonna read through all the rest, but you can basically see we're just kinda of adding and subtracting positions 
to calculate all the dimensions of this here. And then so once we have all those minimum and maximum dimensions, we can actually figure out the different corners. Okay, so we have corners zero, one, two, and three. And uh, just to show you, we have corner zero, corner one, corner two, and corner three. Uh, for example, for corner zero, it's gonna be the minimum of the X and the minimum of the Y. And then for corner one, it's gonna be the minimum of the X and the maximum of the Y because it's the like kind of top corner. So once we know all our corners, we're gonna set our gizmos color. And so we're just going to be checking um, if it's the current screen box. If it is, we're gonna set the gizmos color to green. If it's not, we're gonna set the gizmos color to red. So again, the active one, the active one screen box is gonna be green and all the rest are going to be red. So it's a very clear indication of which current screen box is active and where we can currently see when we're testing our game out. And then the last thing that we need to do is actually just draw the lines. And that's as simple as looping through the array. So when we're at zero, we're gonna draw from zero to one. When we're at one, we're gonna draw from one to two. We're at two, we're gonna draw from two to three, and then three back to zero. And so that's the reason we have that little modulo in there is so we can go from three to zero instead of going from three to four, even though position four doesn't exist. And with that, that's how we can use gizmos to kind of draw an outline of how far that um, our camera can see, which is again, extremely useful for when we're building our game. Uh, so we know exactly what the player can possibly see if they're able to go to every single edge of the screen. And so this to make sure that we don't have any graphics clipped off or any graphics overlaying um, from another screen into the current one. It's just a really simple tool that we can build for our game development. Um, it really doesn't take that long to implement and it's something that can save you a whole lot of time and headaches down the road. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it a like. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more uh, Unity tool tutorials like this one. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to drop them out in the comment section below. And don't forget that you can go ahead and download this asset package um, with the link in the description right now. And with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.